Howdy folks, it's Nito with AP 2020 Outdoors. This is a 2020 SHOT Show, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm here at the Western Powders booth with Rob. Rob, how are you doing? It's great to be here. Thanks for talking to me. Awesome, man. So let, let's talk about Western Powders. Let's talk about three powders in general. Okay. This is a, the slowest powder ever made by a, for commercial manufacturing. Okay. Hey, LRT is the slowest cancer grade product ever made. Okay. It burns in this burn rate somewhere right around Rotumbo. Really? So you can think about working in some of the so overboard cartridges, uh, some of the really big guys. Uh, three, 300, uh, 338 Labua, 300 PRC, some of the great new cartridges that come out. This is the, the highest load density you can get for a propellant. Most right. of the load fills are 100% to about 105%. So it's slightly compressed. Slightly compressed. It's idealized, especially when you're dealing with the spherical, it's very rare. Oh, it's a spherical powder. It's a spherical. Really? That slow burn, really. Yeah, it's something. Oh, that's something else. And then this is number 11 FS. What does that stand for? Well, flash suppressed. So we, we go up numerically. Uh, so okay. We have number nine, number 11 is the next obvious move up. Right. Uh, the FS stands for flash suppressed. This burns in the Winchester 296 range. Okay. It's extremely flash suppressed. So if you carry a, a stuff that was 357 or 44 Magnum, this can reduce the signature by about 95%. Really? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I think I, we need to get some of that and I'll do the high speed video. It's really amazing. Would that be I, awesome? I would like you to do that. Huh? Yeah. Um, not just pistol, can you do 300 blackout? Yeah, absolutely. I, I did some right before I left. I did some testing along with another gun. Right. Uh, with a 150 grain uh, Remington Spirepoint bullet. Right. I got 1950 on average, the standard deviation of six. Serious. <laughs> and what, what is the powder construction? Oh. Is it a spherical ball extruded? Oh, yeah, it's another spherical powder. No, it's spherical powder. Yes. Okay, awesome. All right. My favorite of late is good old Blackhorn. You know, folks, it's funny. I just got introduced to Blackhorn 209 in my muzzleloading world. And I tell you what, you don't get the crud ring with this. This it's stuff a, is awesome. It's a really neat powder. Right. right. The trick, of course, is it's nitrocellulose based. Right. The downside is you have to, it has to ignite in a, in a pressurized environment, just like, right. just like silicon powder does. Right. So it only works in modern inlines, that type of thing, where there's enough heat and enough pressure to propagate ignition. Right. It doesn't work in cap and balls. It doesn't work in flinters or muskets. Right, or right. But modern muzzle loaders, there's really nothing like this on the market. No, no, no. It's just, um, uh, you know, before you guys would have to swab, right, and clean in between shots. Uh, the other thing I noticed, the last video I produced, I think I fired like 28 shots in under 10 minutes and no problems whatsoever. No, it's simply loading and shooting. It's hard to convince people to get away right. from spit patching between shots. Right, and right. All that stuff. Right. Uh, it's, it's just a phenomenal product. Right. So tell me about some of the uh, cleaning products that Western Powder offers. Well, I think if you're going to talk about our neatest stuff, there are two that really stand out. Okay. Right? In terms of the mechanical aspect of cleaning. Right. We have a JAG that's uh, really a fantastic idea. Our, our boss, our, my, my boss, the owner right. of the company actually came up with it. It has competing barbells that sit like this. Okay. To grab the patch. Right. As you run it down the barrel, as you feel a, a, a moment's hesitation where there's a grind or grit or buildup. Right. You can stop and pull back and forth and it catches the path patch both ways so it doesn't slide uh, off I didn't. and holds it. Really? I didn't know that. That's I, a really clever idea. You sent me one and I looked at that and I was just trying to figure out what the reason. That's it. That's so you it. Can, you can, you can uh, pick out precise places that you want to have extra force right. and apply it there. The other thing I think is really neat that we have mechanically are our cleaning rods. And it's, where most rods have some type of bearing surface where it rotates. Right. But we also have that, right? Right. But it's never never quite as smooth as, say, a dewy rod. And the reason for that is you don't need the rotational energy. You need to have force applied laterally like this. Right. So we have thrust bearings in place. So the bearings no are designed way. to work as you push down on it to drive the patch through. Right. The driving force transfers to these two bearing sockets here and here to make it, make it turn smoothly products, solutions that we're kind of proud of. The way we started doing all this stuff is we had a ballistics lab. That's right. primarily what we do. And we test powders that come in, either for the commercial market or the OEM market. Uh, so we needed ways to clean barrels efficiently. So the, this was one of our designs. And we designed a, uh, a, a new type of cleaner. Now, everyone uses ammonia for cleaning. And the reason for that is ammonia is relatively inexpensive. Right. But ammonia will also bond to things that aren't copper or brass, the gilding metals you associate with bullets. The problem with that is if you have barrel steel and there's no more brass left, left to bond to, it'll, it'll bond to the barrel itself. Right. And that's why you have products like Sweets, uh, 
give really specific warnings about how to use it, how long it can be in the barrel. And the repercussions of using it incorrectly are pretty well known. It'll scorch the barrel, it'll suck out, it'll actually start to suck pieces of the barrel out into the solution as it bonds and draws it, it, draws it out. Right. So what we did was kind of clever. We used a, a, fatty, a fatty acid as a bonding agent. So it's, it holds in stasis the ammonia, so it's bonded with our fatty acid. And that's a pretty strong bond. But it's not as attractive to the ammonia as copper is. Right. So it'll break away from that bond and it'll bond to copper. And that works really well, right? But when it runs out of things to bond to, it's much more attractive to its initial bond with the with the fatty acid than it is to barrel steel. So it pulls back into the solution as inert at that point. Ah, okay. So you can leave it in indefinitely if you choose to, even right. though there are only so many there are only so many atoms it can bond to in a barrel at right. that point. But there's no danger of it bonding the barrel steel and damaging it. Right. So it's a really clever bit of chemistry that makes our product quite a bit Interesting. better. Interesting. I never knew that. That's a, All right. Uh, what about patches? I see you guys have patches too. It, patches are a tricky market. We we recently, we, for years, we, we, we got patches from Vibershine. They were a wonderful company to work with. And one day they, they decided they weren't going to manufacture at all because they simply shut down. Right. So going to find a new market was really tough. It's a very tight, dynamic place. For a while we considered making our own patches. Right. And uh, we still may do that. But we, we face the same problems all the other manufacturers would then is finding bulk bulk resources and then having consistent bulk resources coming as we take. Right. So right now we're dealing with a company that's extremely, extremely well versed in what they do. They make underwear. And as a okay. cycling business supply right. us with, with patches, they make underwear product. It's, they're just they're a wonderful company. Their name is Southern Bloomers. Okay. They, they do a very good job. And the products they made are at least as good as the ones we replaced. Right. We really like working with them and the products are wonderful. And finally I see you had some cleaning kits too. We do. They're kind of a, they're a different thing for us. Most of our rods are one piece spring steel. Right. So the clean kits are a little different. The rods themselves are centerless ground once they're assembled. Right. So it makes a smooth juncture between the connections on the rod. Right. No chance of picking up any foreign. No, none at all. Right. And it, and it doesn't abrade the steel as it goes down the barrel. Right. It's really kind of a nicely thought out system. Uh, those rods are in segment. Gives you some some advantages to compact where ours is quite long, obviously. Right, take right. With the end of the field. And they contain their, our jags and patches. And the same things that you associate with the rest of the cleaning line. Just send you a kit for them. Right. Okay. All right, Rob. Hey. It is just great to get to, get to be with you. I look forward to meeting you all week. Awesome. I appreciate <laughs> that. We'll see you all later.